Some positions on the pitch require you to be aggressive, a bit crazy in a way, to play like an animal, but others require you to be calm and collected, to pace yourself and make sure you're ready. The first one that comes to mind is goalkeeping. Players like Iker Casillas and Manuel Neuer played like machines, focused and assessing their positioning by the millimeter. But then there was their titan, Oliver Kahn. Kahn wasn't like the others, he was impulsive. He was like a beast between the sticks, ferocious, acting on instinct, one of a kind, an entertainer, a predator, the one to fear. It all started in 1969 in the city of Karlsruhe. His mother was actually from Latvia and Kahn's father was a midfielder at a local club. From a young age, also in a way inspired by his older brother who felt that same way, Kahn wanted to follow his father's footsteps and become a footballer. Not much happened over his childhood. He joined the academy at his father's club and he soon realized how talented he was in goal. From there on, he just went through the ranks, making the reserve squad for the first time in 1987. Over his first three years, he would play only four matches for the first team, famously conceding four goals in his first ever match. On the other hand, the reserve squad provided him with the experience he needed, playing 73 matches before he had started consistently being called up for the first team in 1990 at the age of 21. For years, Karlsruhe had been hanging by a thread when it came to the possibility of relegation. Every year would be a struggle. Around their first full season with Kahn, as the first choice goalkeeper, they finished 8th place in the Bundesliga. Which most likely, as you're thinking that Kahn barely conceded, and that it was his exceptional goalkeeping that made the difference that year, but not really. They conceded 50 times in 38 matches, about the same as in previous seasons. You see, Kahn wasn't just a great goalkeeper, he was an excellent leader. His passion for the sport led him to be a motivator for the squad, yelling out orders from goal, his voice, in the distance, was enough to make the difference. Over the following years, things only got better for the club. In 1992-1993, they managed this in a UEFA Cup. This qualification for the European competitions must have excited Kahn, who would put on one incredible performance after the other in the following season, which led his team to finish the league season with one of their best defensive performances ever, conceding only six more goals than champions Bayern Munich in the UEFA Cup. They were equally impressive, conceding only seven goals before their exit in the semi-finals to Red Bull Salzburg. This included matches against Bordeaux, PSV and even Valencia, an exciting match where, after a 3-1 first leg defeat, they bounced back with a 7-0 win, with four of the goals coming in under 34 minutes from Edgar Schmidt, who was honestly having the game of his life. It's a shame they ended up going out on away goals, a place in the final could have made this even more historic, but at this point, Oliver Kahn wasn't just an aspiring goalkeeper, he was the winner of the German Goalkeeper of the Year award. It was a name word remembered Bayern started in the best way possible, with Kahn affirming himself as a key player with ease, but just three months into his time there, he ruptured his cruciate ligament. Before his injury, Bayern had only lost one of the first 15 Bundesliga matches, but by the time he came back, the season had completely derailed. There was no salvation possible. The next season, Kahn would still not experience the thrill of winning the Bundesliga, with Bayern finishing 6 points off of first place, but internationally, they would have much better luck. They were playing in the UEFA Cup and despite their first match loss to Lokomotiv, they would be remarkable throughout the whole tournament, only ever failing to win a match once more. They beat both Benfica and Nottingham Forest 7-2 on aggregate before facing arguably the toughest side they had to play in the competition, Barcelona. Containing the likes of Luis Figo, Pep Guardiola and Gheorghe Agi, the first leg would end on a draw but then, much thanks to Khan, they would beat Cruyff's men to the final, where they would decimate Zinedine Zidane's Bordeaux and so Khan would take home his first ever trophy, the UEFA Cup. Over the summer, he would play the Euros, it would be his second ever trophy, but just like in 1994 at the World Cup, 
it would only serve as backup and not play a single minute. Regardless, as Germany beat the Czech Republic, he would get to add this one to his resume as well. The following season would be another mark in his career. With Khan on the pitch, Bayern would only lose three matches over the full league season. It was so great that year that Bayern would win the league with just 34 goals conceded, the lowest amount in nearly a decade. Of course, with all these accolades, Khan took home yet another Goalkeeper of the Year award. Despite hopes that Bayern would enter an era of dominance, the next season saw them enter a two-hours race with Kaiser Slottern. From early on, over the length of the league season, the largest point difference between the two was seven. And though Bayern seemed to be closing up, they would finish on a two-point deficit and fail to retain the league title. It was an old negative though, as that would be the year Khan would win his first ever cup title. Over the summer, once again Khan would spend the entire World Cup on the bench. The life of a goalkeeper is especially tough in these situations. Being very rarely substituted and with only one spot available in the starting 11, it is so much more difficult to get your big break. I can't imagine the frustration they sometimes go through. The following year would be one of his most memorable. Bayern would enter the Champions League with a defeat to a much smaller team once again, this time Brunby. But just like before, that would be their last defeat for a while, going unbeaten against Manchester United, Barcelona, Kaiser Slottern, and even against Shevchenko's Dynamo Kiev, despite his best efforts. This streak would lead them onto the final, one that would become one of the most memorable nights in the history of European football. As the stage was set in Barcelona in the dying minutes of the last full season of the 20th century, Bayern met David Beckham's Manchester United. Both teams had been exceptional domestically, United had won the domestic double with a Premier League and FA Cup already in the bag, while Bayern had already sealed the Bundesliga and League Cup and were already qualified for the final of their domestic cup. It seemed whoever won the match would get a treble added to their trophy cabinet. Khan was needed in full strength. After a free kick by Mario Basler put Bayern in front, the game remained relatively calm with Manchester United seeming incapable of bothering Khan, who was honestly probably more worried at the constant chances being squandered by his teammates. As they went into injury time, it seemed there was no reason to worry, but then Teddy Sheringham scored. Khan pleaded for an offside, but to no avail. In Portugal, we say that one evil never comes alone, and so, a few minutes later, Solskjaer scored yet another injury time goal to seal Man United's victory. For once, Khan looked powerless as he watched the United players celebrate. It's hard to assess what was going on in his head. But one thing is sure, Khan wasn't happy. That day, Beckham was not only a literal, but also a proverbial David. Khan surely was Goliath and he had truly been brought down to his knees. The following season saw immense drama go down in the Bundesliga. From early on, Bayern Munich and Bayer Leverkusen seemed to mirror each other's performances every week. So much so that rarely were they separated by more than two points over the league season. However, with six matches to go, they had the same amount of points and goals scored. The key difference was in the fact that Bayern had only conceded 24 goals so far considerably better than any other team and much thanks to the great Oliver Kahn. However, a home defeat to city rivals 1860 Munich saw them go down to second place. In the remaining matches, Leverkusen would face some of the top teams in the league like Hamburg and Werder Bremen. So there was hope for a while, but sometimes hope just doesn't pan out like you'd want it to. And Leverkusen won every match up to the very last one where they would meet 10th place Hunter Hakin. And as a young Mikael Balak scored an early own goal, they would be defeated and miraculously Bayern would win the Bundesliga title once more. To go along with it, both cup titles would follow suit, though a defeat in the semi-finals of the Champions League would once again stop a now 31-year-old Oliver Kahn from reaching the top of European football. After much wait in the summer of 2000, Khan would finally get to play an international competition with the German national team, the Euro 2000, though a winless group stage would cut it all short. 
More surprisingly, in the last match day of the group stage, Portugal would beat them 3-0 with a hat-trick by current FC Porto coach Sergio Conceição, who has been linked with Tottenham, Napoli and Inter over the last few days. That's just a fun fact I thought you guys would find interesting. The following season is considered by many as Khan's peak performance. He was 32 years old and over that season perhaps the biggest stain would be an early defeat to second tier club Magdeburg on penalties as Khan failed to make a single save but trust me, he would make up for it. The events that occurred over that season were so great that I don't see any point of even focusing on domestic competitions. Let's just say that Bayern won everything else, the League Cup, and once again took the Bundesliga on a tight margin of just one point, only taking over the first place in the second to last match as Schalke were defeated by Stuttgart. This seemed to be becoming kind of an habit. But the real deal that season was the Champions League. Khan had been hunting this trophy for years now when he seemed determined to pull any stunts necessary to win it. Both group stages would go smoothly with only one defeat in each of them, which of course led them onto the knockout stage. There they first met Manchester United, perhaps Khan was looking for revenge for the 1999 final since it did not allow any goals by United before Bayern had already secured the three goal lead, going unbeaten for 90 minutes in Old Trafford. Then came Real Madrid and once again Khan would secure the clean sheet at the Bernabeu as Bayern would eventually win 3-1 on aggregate and make it onto the final. Here, things got really interesting. Bayern met Valencia and right from the beginning the team was set. Penalties. Three minutes into the match, Can was unable to stop a penalty from Mendieta, only to watch Canizares stop Bayern's penalty just six minutes later. Regardless, yet another penalty would level the match and the result would be kept for the 120 minutes that followed. Can was already being recognized for his incredible season, but it was this moment who solidified this as one of the best ever seasons by a goalkeeper. Paulo Sergio would miss his penalty and after four consecutive successful penalties, Bayern was in a position no team would want to be in, so Khan simply stepped in and saved the penalty, and as it seemed like Bayern had maybe been saved for good, Anderson missed yet another penalty. As Carboni stepped into the box, Khan knew he had to save it or most likely witness his team lose an European final. Khan dropped to his left and the ball went down the middle. For most it would be too late, but Khan swatted it into the crossbar with a sort of primal instinct that makes for a legendary goalkeeper. After two more penalties were hit, it was now sudden death. The first two would go in, then Linka would score as well, and Khan had the future of the match in his hands, and so he saved the third penalty of the night. Khan was the man of the match, the hero, the most cherished myth of that year's competition. If penalty shootouts had been for many moments of introspection, Khan yelled, he screamed, he shook, he flailed his arms around and punched the goalposts. He was Munich's most ferocious guard dog and for as long as he watched, no one was gonna break into his home. After a year like this, it would be hard to improve much, but I don't think anyone was expecting Bayern to lose out on the European Super Cup, to be forced into extra time at the Intercontinental Cup, to fail to make it to any of the cup finals and only get a third place finish in the Bundesliga. Sure, they were just two points of a first place, but it was still an embarrassment. Perhaps Khan knew that his results were not on par with the image he had built for himself over the previous year, so once the 2002 World Cup started, he seemed to want it more than ever. Though, on the other hand, if he did want to win it with his unimpressive German side, he was paired with. He would have to fight for it like he had never had to before. From the beginning of the tournament, it became clear that Khan was on another level. He was the star of the team. Just looking at the results, you can easily get an idea of how important Khan must have been for them. Aside from the eight-goal fest against Saudi Arabia, only the match against Cameroon was won by more than one goal. On his way to the final, Khan only conceded once, a last-minute blunder scored by Robbie Keane. 
Out of those six matches, the most memorable for our mythical goalkeeper came against the United States. Like in many other of their matches, Germany won by a single goal, relying heavily on Kahn's miracle saves in order to keep them afloat. By the end of the match, Beckenbauer would say that this entire team should be scrapped, except for Kahn. Let's make one thing clear, this team should have never made it to a World Cup final. That alone was a miracle, only Kahn could pull off. But given the immensity of his performances up to this point, the crowds weren't too worried about setting the stage. They now face Brazil, but it wasn't Germany that would play them, it was Kahn by himself. The match was Kahn vs Ronaldo, it was Kahn vs Rivaldo, it was Kahn vs Ronaldinho, it was Kahn against the whole world. As the first half was played out and the German defense made one mistake after the other, if there was any doubt, some started believing that Kahn could be capable of stopping one of the most impressive attacking trios in the history of national team football. But well, I don't mean to repeat myself, but in Portugal we have a saying, even water will break through rock if it hits it enough times. And so by the 67th minute, after countless attempts, the massive boulder that was Oliver Kahn collapsed and Brazil went in front to Ronaldo. A few minutes later, he scored again. Though the first goal will forever be an embarrassment for Kahn, who failed to hold on to the ball, allowing for Ronaldo's rebound, there is no arguing that the loss of possession that preceded it was unforgivable. The defense failed Kahn before Kahn could fail them. In the second goal, the lack of communication is just baffling. There was nothing Kahn could have done with centre-backs who made mistakes like those by his side. As the game ended 2-0 for Brazil, maybe Khan, who demanded far too much from himself, was thinking this blunder would stain his season, but the world of football was still in awe. The golden ball of the tournament went to Khan, even though Ronaldo had scored an astonishing 8 goals. The Lev Yashin award wasn't even up for question, and then Oliver Khan became the first goalkeeper to make the podium of the Ballon d'Or on two different occasions. I guess that after an embarrassing club season like the previous one, Bayern knew they had to pick up their pace once again, so after an early exit in the Champions League group stage, they pulled through and won the Bundesliga by an impressive margin of 16 points. From this moment onwards, Kahn's career slowly fizzled out. Bayern remained inconsistent. In 2004, they didn't win a single trophy, but the year after, they managed another impressive win in the Bundesliga with a 14-point advantage and the domestic treble. Then they finally managed to retain the trophy, only to finish fourth the following season and lead Khan to play his final professional season in the UEFA Cup, where they would oddly enough get hammered 5-1 by Zenit despite managing to celebrate Khan's exit from the football world with yet another domestic treble. Khan would retire as the goalkeeper with the most clean sheets and matches played in the Bundesliga, an absolute legend in his home country and an unforgettable goalkeeper for the entire world. Despite Khan's aggressive, over-the-top persona, he wasn't truly a madman. Behind all of it was a smart and patient guardian who examined the game and a striker's every nuance tell like a professional poker player. Khan was one of a kind and he led the forefront of goalkeeping, Without Oliver Kahn, there wouldn't be a Manuel Neuer. Modern goalkeeping would have been kept on hold for a few more years. Now, getting into the ranking system. Whenever I rank a goalkeeper, I always like to point out that this really isn't my area of expertise at all. I just really wouldn't want to leave them out, but yeah, trust me, you wouldn't want to see me between the sticks. I am not very good at all. So, regardless, let's do this. Reflexes are a 9 out of 10, I've seen him get one-handed saves after dropping to the wrong side way too much, it's incredible. Positioning is an 8 out of 10, as much as he influenced a lot of the modern goalkeepers into stepping further out from the goal and all that, I feel like his euphoric way of goalkeeping led him to frequently get himself in a worse position than what he could have been if he was more conservative, but I don't know, maybe I'm just another doubter who can't understand his genius. 
Communication was excellent, a 9 out of 10. Shot prediction had me indecisive. After that 2001 final, it would feel weird not to give him a 10. Though I feel like, in a way, his predictions weren't what made that night so special. Regardless, I still think it's a 10 out of 10. When it comes to mentality, I'm a big fan of his on-field presence. It's a 10 out of 10. Longevity and adaptability is a 7 out of 10. He just started his career a bit too late and he never really left Germany with this totals out to 76 out of 90, making him the highest rated keeper so far, though he remains tied with Buffon. But of course, you can go down in the description and vote for how good you think he was and hopefully the ranking will end up reflecting your opinion. I also have to point out that I've added the score of Davor Schuker to the list. You guys were really unimpressed by him. I was wasn't expecting that. On a final note, I'd like to ask you to vote for Aymar again. I messed up and lost the voting, so yeah, I'll add this link in the description and if you could do me that favor, it would mean a lot. So yeah, this was Oliver Kahn's career in a video, he's an exceptional player, I really enjoyed getting to know more about him, I hope you did as well, and yeah, that's it, see you next week, bye.